Julius Mahadabi has been sworn in as Sierra Leone's new president hours after the Electoral Commission announced his victory. The opposition candidate who won 51% of votes cast in the March 31st runoff was sworn in at a hotel in the capital Freetown. Samura Kamara, the candidate of the ruling All Progressives Congress, got 48% in the tightly contested poll. Mahanda Bu, a former military junta, replaces outgoing President N.S. Bai Koroma, who could not seek re-election due to term limits. I feel happy about the results that I hear because of my hearing that my, 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 my uh, president will have another appeal and win the, uh, the, 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 the election in this country. So I'm so happy over it. I'm yeah. so happy because um, um, the result that I hear that the other appeal have become successful in this, in this uh, political challenge. We, we are all happy. An African affairs analyst at Demola Oshodi joins us via Skype to share his views on the presidential polls in Sierra Leone. Many thanks for joining us. Now we have a president who was sworn in just hours after the announcement of the results. Do you think this is standard procedure or do you think, I mean, the government was trying to avoid some issues? Well, we've been sworn in um, right after an election. It's rather unusual anywhere in the world. But uh, there's some countries that immediately after the election results are declared, the winner is immediately sworn in. And Sierra Leone just happens to be one of them. Um, it is a constitutional um, uh, requirement. It's not just something that was uh, done, you know, uh, free, free, free will, really. But it's rather unusual. All right, but the ruling party, the candidate for the ruling party, Kamara, is already in crying for that he will go to court and contest the election. What do you think would be the outcome of that? Well, the, it's, um, I, the election was uh, observed by a lot of um, election, foreign election observers and um, a lot of interested parties and governments, especially the United States and uh, the British government. And everybody basically said the election process was fair and fair. It basically reflected the will of the Sierra Leonean uh, voter. So, um, it, but it's, you know, in an emerging democracy like Sierra Leone and many parts of the, of the world, especially Africa or um, parts of Asia, you have um, the, the loser, um, apparent loser, always um, result into courts. Um, it's a standard procedure. And in many cases, they, many times they do have a case, but most of the time it is almost automatic. Like once you lose an election in an emerging democracy, you run to the courts and you claim there's some fraud or something going on. And um, if you look at the initial election that was done on the 7th of March, when uh, the uh, the person that won, um, Mr. Bill, about, about, about Bill, won slightly in the, in the first vote, there was also issues um, regarding the next election when the, the both uh, individuals were to were run for the uh, for, and, you know, contest for the runoff. They also cried fraud, fraud there. So, but, you know, I can assure you the international community was, you know, paid much attention to the Sierra Leone election and they didn't see any major problems there. Okay, now we have a country that just recovered from Ebola with a struggling health care. We also have a country that experienced a massive mudslide um, caused by poor infrastructure and deforestation. What do you think this new president should, the issues he should take on head on immediately? First thing is really stability. Um, Sierra Leone has gone through tremendous crisis, the uh, civil war from 1991 to 2002, and then the Ebola crisis, and then the mudslide. It's, a, it's one of the poorest countries in the world. But um, I think stability, as long as it's a stable system, um, investors will be looking at it, will be interested, investors in Africa, investors in, the, in Europe, in China especially. So stability is number one. Beyond that, trying to get as much foreign um, assistance, um, aid from uh, the uh, European Union, China, uh, the United States, uh, the British government, DFID. Um, beyond that, I think it's just to, to trod on slowly and carefully and uh, ensure that, uh, you know, access roads are, uh, are opened up, people are educated. Education is huge. Uh, it's it's going to help the country tremendously in the near future. Um, and uh, ensure that they have a good relation with their neighbors, especially Nigeria. Nigeria is a big uh, partner in Sierra Leone is providing technical aid and also providing a lot of uh, infrastructural advice. All right, he probably will need the support of the parliament. Yeah. You're aware that his party, the opposition party, is a minority in the parliament as we speak. How do you think he will get his policies through? 
well, it's not the first time in, uh, in emerging democracies to have you know a, a different party taking a majority in the House and the Parliament. Um, there are ways. Um, you know, every every country has its unique way of uh, getting its laws passed. When you have um, your op opponent taking uh, control of the House, um, it's going to be a the unique Sierra way of getting it done. Um, I, I really don't know. I can't speculate on that. But a lot of it will depend on his personality. A lot of it will depend on his. Uh, and is um, you know the relationship with the, the defeated party that's uh, Mr. Uh, Samura Kamara, and also the incumbent Mr. Komoro, that just left office. They would negotiate and they would hopefully horse trade and uh, to ensure that the, the Sierra Leone's cause, the, the main interest of the people of Sierra Leone, is taken care of and government runs smoothly. Okay, we thank you for your time on the broadcast at Demola Oshudi. We appreciate you.